Hey, Observer! All these indie games with pixel art aesthetics got me thinking. A thought struck me! Can a CRT shader enhance these art directions without breaking them? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Dreaming, even. It's not as if it would make this much of a... Oh... It is I, Vilithos. I made myself a CRT shader to enhance them all. Games old and new. While playing lots of indie metroidvania games with retro looks, it hit me. How would these games look like with a CRT shader on? Turns out the feeling of a game taking place inside an old TV is pretty unique. Not for the sake of nostalgia, but simply how colors and pixels hit your retina. It's really the texture, the illusion of it being a CRT. Now, at this point, I was sold. The CRT vibe is special. Though, while playing for a prolonged time, these shaders really made it crystal clear to me the reasons on why barely anyone uses them. Most CRT filters are so, so true to reality that they actually are sort of terrible. They make the image blurry, have weird artifacts, are oversaturated, add some sort of color tint, are noisy, flickery, or outright flat require an HDR monitor, which I don't have, and on top of that, destroy the original art direction. How dare they? In the end, they are annoying and complicated to set up. People don't have time. Who can bother learning how to tweak a shader all by yourself? <sighs> With that said, I was up for a challenge. The biggest challenge is how every shader put onto a game is relative. A CRT shader may work for one game, but is likely to look terrible on every other game. Especially when dealing with pixel art, it's all about the pixel count of sprites used. <sighs> but I want to be lazy, not adjust a stupid shader manually for every game I play. Anyways, here's how I did it. Most key to the CRT vibe is the pattern. Let's call it black lines. When trying to make the typical black lines of a CRT visually pleasing, flickering occurs very easily. Even if that is a vibe you dig, for how long will your eyes endure it? Honestly, I think it's making games harder to read. A twitching eyeball is what is guaranteed at best. You're in for the vibe, not the pain! The solution was to give you just enough black lines so you can see the game clearly, but the texture of a CRT is right in there. It's the little things that make the vibe. Speaking of readability, Text needs to be readable. Gosh, I can't emphasize enough how easily the clarity of letters gets lost when using shaders in general. With CRT shaders, you are bound to lose some clarity. There is no perfect fix to this, meaning despite all these effects and whatever jazz is being put inside a shader, all I could do was try to maintain readable words. For each CRT black line pattern, I adjusted the phosphor mask vertically and horizontally to hopefully maintain letter readability horizontally while introducing a tiny bit of texture vertically. This already is pretty convincing. Uh -huh. It works because we humans read horizontally, rarely vertically. A true win for topography and graphic design! Maintaining the original colors of a game as best as possible is a bit tricky. 
as each of my CRT shaders adjusts the overall brightness depending on its texture. Different patterns of black lines let through more or less values of grey. I've set up each shader's black line patterns using retro 3D and pixel art games. My shaders should work for most games, but still, it may require some in-game brightness adjustments. Again, perfection doesn't exist, especially for CRT shaders. Probably the hardest obstacle was to find a fair balance of pixelation and anti-aliasing while also tricking the eye into believing the light is refracting. The problem here lies in CRT screens blurring clear pixels, which manipulates the original image quality heavily. It's sort of the big crux on why CRT visual effects tend to be avoided. I mean, we have monitors now capable of great visual detail and clarity. Why worsen it? Not everything is worth replicating, such as camera effects like motion blur and depth of field. If not executed properly, it worsens the experience. Observer, I've made a decision. Despite the CRT vibe being so specific, not everything of it is worth introducing into the shader. The ultimate solution was to let your brain fill in on the rest of the CRT effect. Quite funny, considering that this is what CRTs actually did. All I needed to do was introduce a tiny, tiny bit of the CRT vibe for your imagination to go wild. CRTs used to have thick glass, no pixels. To create this effect, I added a tiny bit of bloom in the CRT component and an even tinier amount of ambient light to make you think pixel colors are bleeding into each other. Then, to create the illusion of thick glass refracting light, I introduced a slight screen curvature while also adding a second larger bloom with high saturation but very, very little intensity. I noticed how some text became harder to read, so I've put slight sharpening beneath, just to be safe. With very low dithering, the colors could then be scattered so the light appears to be somewhat evenly distributed. Specifically for 3D games, I tweaked two additional different kinds of dithering components to intentionally worsen texture slightly while still maintaining their colors as the black line patterns are already taking so much off the literal spotlight. And that is it. A CRT vibe shader to enhance any of your games. Installation takes about two minutes. All details are in the description. One last thing though. If applying the CRT vibe to a modern game with high fidelity, you may want an even harder retro look. In your game, lower the graphic settings to the lowest, keep shadows and lighting somewhat of good quality, and finally, you may adjust the brightness in the game, not the shader. Doesn't work on every game, but on some games, it's quite satisfying. You could also adjust the frame rate to be capped at 30, but uh, let's not give video game developers more reasons to slack off at optimizing towards a consistent 60 FPS performance. Now, be gone and never come back. You've got games to play. Also leave a comment, let me know if that thing actually looks good on your favorite game or something.